I have always been a risk taker. I think I was just born like that. Any time you know you sort of step out and do something on your own from a business point of view, it is, it is about risk taking. But I, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yes, it certainly comes with its stresses and very sort of trying times, especially with such a you know sort of volatile economy, and particularly with the type of uh, philosophy that I have here at Billy Kwong, which is all about sustainability. In order to run a sustainable restaurant, i.e. use the most naturally grown produce, only use organic Japanese soys, recycling paper and so on and so on, that is actually quite an expensive exercise. It's an expensive exercise to do, but again I wouldn't have it any other way because to me it's not just about the bottom line and the money, it's about the people and the planet as well and that at the end of the day is what gives me moment to moment fulfillment and satisfaction in life and it comes back to my Buddhist practice of you know making every single moment count, making one's life meaningful and rich and, and substantial. Apart from cooking several nights a week in my restaurant I also love to get out into the community a lot it's very important to me and I guess from a spiritual and philosophical point of view it comes back to my practice of Buddhism which is very much about helping others uh, reaching out to your community. Every Saturday I do my um, Billy Kwong stall at our local farmers market which is called Everly, Everly Markets and I stand there with three of my staff and I sell about you know hundreds of pancakes and our Billy Kwong pork dumplings to customers who are literally sort of like 10 centimetres in front of me. Whereabouts in Italy did you go? Uh, we to the Aeolian Islands. Oh, how beautiful. And I love this day. It's like my weekly therapy. I mean, I've been doing it for two years. I get up at 4.30 every Saturday morning. Everyone's, you know, you're crazy. Why do you do this? And I, and I, and I say to them, you don't understand. This is where it all started for me. This is about cooking. This is about seeing people's responses when you're offering them some of your heart. Uh, not to mention it's outdoors, so it's great to be in the open fresh air. It's, it's surrounded by wonderful organic fruit and vegetable providers. So for me, I get to see what's in season immediately. A lot of the produce that I use in my Billy Kwong stall and, and uh, the produce I use in the restaurant now comes from the providers at Everly Market. So I've made lots of newfound friendships there and relationships and that's very important to me. Bella Bella, eucalyptus. Yes. And have you got magnolias? Uh, yes. Whether we're talking about everyday produce, you know, products like carrots or potatoes or eggs, I really believe that when you have a story to tell behind them, when we know the person who grew them or who produced them, it, it really intensifies the experience of, of, of the food and the flavour. It gives it context and meaning and I think that's so important. What's it called? Wild woman Wild weed? Wild woman weed. Oh my god, crazy I love it. Woman weed. I love it, I love it. I've been cooking since I was about five years of age and I'm 43 now. I grew up in North Epping, the northwestern suburbs of Sydney, and my mother taught my, my two brothers and I how to cook. And although we are 29th generation Kwong, we're actually three generations Australian. My great-grandfather Kwong Sudak brought our family name to Australia in the mid-1800s, the days of the gold rush. And over the years, he travelled between Australia and mainland China, where he was born. And he acquired four Chinese wives and together they produced 24 children and that is where I come from. We have in fact one of the largest family trees in Australia's immigration history. The lessons my mother taught me as a child and just the whole experience of one's childhood really paved the way for the person I am today. There is no doubt about that because when I was young, the message she gave me was Food makes people happy. We can do you a gluten-free, a pancake without the pancake. Thank you. All of this and an egg and no pancake. That'd be great. Pleasure. Offering my customers the, you know, the most naturally grown, vibrant, life-giving food is the best possible way my staff and I can make a contribution to the community. I always try and teach my staff we have to give, give to others. It's not always just about us. And that's what the Dalai Lama also says about as well. You know, your actions, they're, they're not just for your benefit. They've got to be for other people's benefit. How can you benefit others? When was your birthday? Same day. Same day. Happy birthday, darling. Yeah. 
Yeah. We must be similar ages then, aren't we? <laughs> I made a decision a long time ago that, you know, for example, with my career, I want to always be in a career or a job that I love going to. There are too many people, there are too many of us who spend, you know, we spend, what, at least a minimum of 40 hours a week at work. How many people in the world don't like going to work or have the Sunday night blues? And, and you know, I don't want to be that person. That is a waste of time and energy and precious, precious, precious life. So I make sure that every single moment in my day is doing what I love to do, or if it's, if it's something that I don't like to do, like, for example, my tax, it's, it's rearranging one's attitude about that. You know, we can't have all the, all, the, all the happiness and gorgeousness every single moment, Kylie, just grow up. We need to do this tax in order to run the business and whatever. So it, it, it always comes back down to one's attitude. How am I going to view this situation? There's your gluten-free. Pleasure. I have no idea where my life is heading, my exterior life, but what I do know is that I am with my partner, a person who I want to be with forever. What I do know is the values, the spiritual values that I, I like and wish and, and would like to continue to embody in my life. And I really believe that if well, this just works for me, if I have all of my spiritual values in line or if I feel spiritually clear and balanced, then everything else in my life, mental, physical, emotional and what have you, it all seems to fall into place. So if I look after myself, soul, spirit, heart, in all the ways that I've just talked about, mindfulness, all of that, then everything else will fall into place and that's all I focus on. And I have no doubt that the rest will take care of itself. And you know, I look upon every moment and every day as a great challenge and, and wonderment. I do, I have a lot to live for, I love life.